Hey guys, today we're gonna unbox the DTX 9905S. So let's get started. So first out of the box we have the power harness. For those of you familiar with Kenwood, it is the bigger L-shaped one that is going to have your parking brake and reverse trigger built into it. We have a Bluetooth microphone, which is the same Bluetooth microphone Kenwood has used forever and ever. GPS antenna. It does not have GPS built into it, but it requires the antenna for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It comes with two USBs, really nice. They're about three feet in length. One is black, one is gray, and they are true USBs, meaning they have a male and female end on both. And of course it comes with the owner's manual, bag of screws, and some extraction tools because this unit actually has a cage. It won't fit in anything, but it has one. All right, so we're gonna pull it out of the box and we're gonna show you what's in the back. All right, so the first thing we're gonna start with is these three yellow RCAs here located in the top left corner. One is going to be your rear view camera input. The next is going to be video out. This has a dual zone capable output which we'll talk about in a little bit and one is going to be dash cam or front view camera now anytime we install one of these we go ahead and write on here what they are because these are little flags and if you lose them well guess what on the bottom here you have the hd fm antenna it's a standard antenna it just this has hd radio built into it next we're going to talk about the two usbs on the back there is a black there is a gray they have six inches off of the unit the black is usb one the gray is usb two black is the only one that will do the wired car play you can use this to do NTFS FAT32 so you can plug a full hard drive into this it's pretty cool next located right here on the top back of the radio is going to be the Bluetooth mic input directly next to that is the GPS antenna below it down here this other auxiliary looking input is going to be the audio out that's going to match up to the video out that was located here you have your 5 volt preamp output starting with rear front is in the middle sub is on the bottom you have a cooling fan this white connector here is for the dash cam option that is also going to pair up with the yellow dash cam input this is what's going to provide power for it you have your av input this is a true av input or aux adapter if you use the ca c3 av which is aux to rca adapter that allow you to plug things in such as maybe an hdmi if you'd like because there isn't one anywhere on the back of this this black connector over here paired up with this other aux jack looking connector are going to be for your iData Link Maestro adapter. This is for the Sirius XM, the SVX 300 add-on tuner, as well as the main power plug goes right here. Now we're going to go ahead and turn this guy over and show you what the front of the radio looks like. So when the unit first powers up, it's going to ask you a few questions. First one being language. If you tap language, tap English, there's going to be 21 different languages for you to choose from. Pick the one you like and select close. Click the back arrow. Next is going to be clock. It's going to ask you, do you want to be in a 12 or 24 hour time display? Do you want it to sync through GPS? What time zone do you live in? If you tap time zone, you can go ahead and select the time zone you're closest to. Next, you're gonna move on to display. There's two things that'll ask you here in display. Although there are more things in display, when it first starts up, these are the only two you get asked about. First one is going to be key colors, which are these guys right here. Go ahead and pick one. You can go ahead and make your own, select adjust. You can make it any color you want, simply by tapping, or just pick one of the preset colors that it has. You can click scan, which will allow this to just scroll through. Next is view angle. View angle is a brightness, darkness, contrast, black level adjust that this allows you to do so that you can see the display more clearly when you're sitting off viewing access. So if you tap these, you'll notice display changes slightly. This will make it easier to see. Now this being the 9905, this also has the anti-glare screen as well as the best off-axis viewing of any screen on the market right now. Next is going to be your camera. This is going to let you to set up all the camera options available on the radio. First thing is going to be rear camera interruption. If you're just adding a backup camera, go ahead and select this. If you're adding a backup camera, you have to select this because it will not know that you have a backup camera unless you turn this on. You also have to hook up the purple white wire on the back of the radio. 
that's gonna trigger this to let it know, hey, I'm in reverse. Right here where it says rear camera settings, if you're using Kenwood's dedicated CMOS 300 series camera, this will highlight. If you're not, don't worry about it, it's going to stay gray. Parking guidelines. This has guidelines if your camera doesn't have them. To set them up, select guideline setup. Once you're in the screen, go ahead and use these arrows to move it in or out. This is the one we're looking at here. We can tap, we can adjust up, we can adjust down. It's a very slow, methodical adjustment. The best place to do this is when you're in a parking lot. Go ahead and pull through so you have a parking space behind you, and then just drop these on those white parking lines. That way you'll have a good idea of how wide they should be. And then set the middle one for, I don't know, six feet, five feet behind you, whatever works for you. Next, we have the front camera option. If we select on, it'll go ahead and turn on the front camera. Now, there again, the front camera grayed out setting here. You have to have that CMOS 300 camera from Kenwood if you want that to work. A new feature on this radio is front camera interruption. Now, what this does is this is a feature so that when you put the car into reverse, the reverse camera comes on. Once you put it back in drive or park, the front facing camera is going to come on, in this case, for 15 seconds. If you tap it, you can choose off to where it won't do that at all, 10 seconds, 15, or 20 seconds. This is helpful so that if you're trying to see, if you're backing up or pulling forward and you wanna see a curb or something like that in front of you, we'll get to other ways to turn on the camera as we move through this. Next is OEM setup, if you notice it's grayed out. The OEM setup is gonna be for you using the iDatalink Maestro connector. If you're not using that, it's not going to come up. And of course, demo. Go ahead and turn demo off. When you're done, go ahead and select finish. That's gonna bring you to this screen. This is the warning screen that everyone loathes. Right here where it says automatically remove this screen after 10 seconds. If you check this box and then select agree, every time you power the car up, this screen will come up for 10 seconds and then magically go away. Select agree if you want it to go away faster. That screen will also go away anytime you put it in reverse. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this screen for a little bit, because after all, this is one of the features on the 9905 that makes this radio so amazing. It is a 6.75 inch AAS LCD panel, TFT active matrix, with 2,764,800 RGB pixels. It is LED backlit and capacitive touch. It is 1280 by 720 HD display. That's right, 1280 by 720. Most screens, just for a reference, are 800 by 480. This is the highest res screen on the market right now. It does have some hard buttons across the bottom right here. First up are going to be volume up and down. Next to it, if you notice this little shiny box right here, this is for the IR for the handheld remote control. Next to that is going to be cam. If you hit the cam button, it'll go ahead and launch the camera. Right now it's set to display the front camera. If you picture an H over the top of this area here, if you tap here, it'll go ahead and switch to rear. Tap it again, it'll switch to front. If you notice, there's a little car that appears. When you're done, select the bottom of the H and it'll go away. This is the home screen here. So for example, if we get out of here and we'll just select HD radio, if we hit this button, it'll take us back to this home screen. If we tap here, it'll take us back to the radio. Now if you press and hold the home button, it'll go ahead and put the radio to sleep or turn it off. Go ahead and tap it again and the radio will power back up. Now next to the home button is the menu button. If you tap the menu you'll notice there's a menu that appears from the top and a menu that appears from the bottom. The bottom is going to be your sources, the top is going to be your functions. If you're listening to some music, if you press and hold the menu button, it'll go ahead and launch mute. Next to that is going to be your app switching button. What this is used for is if you're doing Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, and we press this button, it'll go ahead and switch to whatever source we're doing. So in this case, we have CarPlay on. Android Auto would work the same way. Hit the home button, it'll go ahead and take us back to home. Hit this button, it'll go ahead and take us back. Now you can also just hit the Kenwood icon here, and it'll move you through. Next is going to be the eject button. If we go ahead and hit eject, we can tilt the display. It has six levels of tilt. 
Basically what that means it's gonna go ahead and do this, so if there's any form of glare on the screen, not that it matters to this screen because it is the most anti-glare screen on the market, or if you just want it to be easier to see, you have six levels of adjustment or none at all. If you select disc eject, It'll go ahead and open up so you can put this CD DVD in. Once you load it, it'll automatically close. Otherwise, you can go ahead and tap that and it'll close the unit. Now, if for some reason this guy will not eject the CD, you're hitting this button, no problem. Press and hold this for three seconds. It'll bring up the force eject screen. Select yes, and it'll forcibly remove the disc from the unit. Now what we wanna do is we're gonna go back and talk about the menu button. So we'll go ahead and press that. And we'll talk about the functions here across the top. First up are going to be screen adjust. You have backlighting adjust. Any other adjustments that need to be done are all gonna be done through that. So depending on what function you're in, contrast, dark, black levels, whatever, are all gonna be done by hitting that button. Display off. Just that, it's gonna go ahead and turn the background image off. It's not gonna turn off the display. As you can see, the clock is still being displayed. But at nighttime, if you're trying to make it not so glaring, you can do that. Touch it, it'll come back on. Camera. This is the second way to turn on the camera. So now we can use this button here, or we can use a function button. Tap the top of the H, tap the bottom of the H. Setup. This is a big one. There's a lot of things in setup. AV. Now in AV, there's gonna be a lot of options that are grayed out because they have to do with like Android Auto and we're doing Apple CarPlay. We wanna know what driving position we're on, the left or right, or in this case, OEM setup, which would have to do with the iDatalink Maestro. But the AV out is highlighted and you can turn that on and off. Display. This is where all the display settings are gonna be. Your dimmer control, you can select, do you want it off, on, or sync with the wire. Key color, just like earlier, you can pick what color you want the keys to be. Wallpaper customized. Now this one is a biggie, because a lot of you guys like to customize the wallpapers, such as put up car logos. And if you notice, there's two blank ones right here where it says no image. That's where they're gonna go. So if you'd like your car logos or whatever to go on this, you're gonna load them here, and that's gonna be done over USB. Out of the box, you have straight black, you have a carbon fiber, you have a brushed aluminum, and you have a cool beach scene. You have sync album artwork. Basically what this is gonna do is gonna put a really blurry image of whatever you're listening to on the wallpaper and it will constantly change. If you have an HD channel that broadcasts album artwork, it'll put a blurry image of the artwork on the back. Next to that is color sync. What that's gonna do is if you want the wallpaper color to match the color of the buttons, it'll go ahead and do that. So for example, we'll come over here and we'll select key color pink. As you can see, now it's pink. We'll select key color orange, and now it's orange. Blue, red, green. You get the idea. You can also change the color of the wallpaper here. You don't have to go back, so if you want a nice purple, boom. The view angle that we showed earlier on startup is also adjusted here, so if you'd like to go back and change it, you can. Screen transition effect. This has to do with a feature we're gonna show you in a little bit. User interface, widgets. And this is what that screen transition would have to do with, is the widgets, which will show you what a widget is. Beep volume. This beeps when you hit the buttons. You can turn it up, you can turn it down. Parking assist display, parking assist position. This has to do with the iDatalink Maestro. You can change the language here. You can change the time format. You can set your clock. You can change your time zone. Camera. That same setting we did at the beginning, it's all located here, so if you'd like to change anything, this is where you do it. Special. If you forgot to turn off the demo mode or you had it installed and they forgot to turn off the demo mode, and the special feature is where your demo mode is going to be. Software information, open source licensing is also here. And then on the bottom you have initialize. Initialize is if you'd like to reset the radio back to factory settings, you could select initialize and it'll do that. So for example, when we're done with this radio, we're gonna come in here and select that because God only knows what buttons we push. That way it'll be back to factory defaults for the next use. Bluetooth. It's just that. When you're pairing your Bluetooth phone, this is where it's gonna be found. Audio. We're gonna come back to audio because that's a big one and I like to save it for last. Apple CarPlay. 
This is actually just the current source that you're listening to. So if you were on HD radio, it would display HD. If you were listening to CD, it would display CD. It's just a quick button back to that source. Now let's talk about the bottom four, or as I like to call them, your four favorites. Now the four favorites, as you notice, just match these. So let me hit the menu again, and it'll be the same. Ready? And there they are again. Depending on what you're doing, whether you, let's say you have a DVD, you're watching a movie or something like that, where these buttons are not going to be, or for example, if we come back here and we go to HD radio, as you'll notice, it has four, but they're small. Hit menu, there's the bigger ones. Tap here. These are all your sources. The four across the bottom are your favorites, and they're easy to move. But let's talk about sources for a minute. Now the first source that this radio has listed is going to be the HD FM radio. So if you tap that, it's gonna take you to this page here. This is where your standard AM FM radio is located. If you tap this guy here, it'll go ahead and pull out your 15 presets that you have access to for FM, as well as five for AM. To make a setting, it's just press and hold. It'll go ahead and make it, then you can close it. If you tap over here, this will allow you to do 10 key direct. So if you know the station, you can go ahead and type it in. So this has HD radio. So if you see a little HD icon appear on here or it says HD one next to the channel, you can use these buttons here, channel up and down to select between the HD. If the HD channel has album artwork, it will appear here. Otherwise, it's just going to be this image. This image will be there regardless. There's no way to turn this image off. It just stays there. This image is also going to be in your home menu. If you tap in your home menu, it will take you back to this source. Next to that is going to be Weblink. Weblink is an app that you can download from Kenwood using the Weblink software. It's gonna give you access to a very poor representation of YouTube, Media Player, which is basically in this case your phone, Yelp Reviews, Local Weather, and Next Radio. So if you tap any one of these, it'll go ahead and take you out. Now keep in mind, for some of these you are going to need to have an account to have access to it. So this is what the YouTube looks like, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Next is going to be the Sirius XM. As we said, if you have the SVX 300 add-on tuner, you can have Sirius XM. The interface is gonna look very similar to FM. Next up is going to be Bluetooth Music. Now, Bluetooth Music allows you to have five phones connected to this radio for what they call party mix. If you tap here, you can get to the Bluetooth settings, if you tap up here on the top, this is where your five phones will be listed. The nice thing about the music is it has nothing to do with the phone for calls. So you can be listening to any phone you want and still make and receive calls on a different phone that you've chosen. Spotify, Pandora. These are gonna be apps done from the phone. These are also gonna be apps that are in Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The only reason why you'd have access to these is if you're just gonna do a Bluetooth connection and you want to be able to control those two. You can also control them in Bluetooth audio. Disc, as we showed, you hit the eject button here and you can put a CD or DVD into it. iPod, because this has dual USB, you can actually connect USB 2 to an old iPod. Leave it in the glove box and have access to that iPod. Waze. So at the time of recording, Apple CarPlay does not have access to Waze. However, the Weblink service does. So if you've got the Kenwood Weblink app on here, it will allow you to do Waze on your radio from an iPhone. Android Auto, of course, has Waze built into it. This icon here where it says Exit Weblink, this is going to be for CarPlay because right now we're using Weblink. It's going to switch between the two. They have a dedicated Android Auto. So you have to pick one. You can't do Android Auto and CarPlay. Telephone. This is going to be for Bluetooth phone. You can have a different phone selected. There's two. So this has dual phone pairing. You can have two phones paired at the same time. Now keep in mind, anytime you plug in for CarPlay, it's going to go ahead and kick those phones out. If you're doing Weblink, you can still use Bluetooth. Select which phone you want and that's what you're going to be able to make outgoing phone calls with. Incoming phone calls will ring either way. Whatever phone is paired at the time doesn't matter for an incoming call. It'll automatically switch to the phone that has an incoming call. Select the next arrow. Next up is going to be USB. As we said earlier, the USB will do NTFS hard drives as well as FAT32 thumb drives. AVN. This is going to be for that aux input on the back. Another access to audio you can put the radio in standby, which will just leave the color display up and allow you to still make and receive Bluetooth calls, still do Android Auto, still do Apple CarPlay, but without any media playing. Next, you're gonna have a bunch of grayed out features. 
Those grayed out features are gonna be for your iData link connection or your add-on K40 radar detector that's going to be done through also the iData link connection. As we said at the beginning, it's very easy to move around the icons. So if you press and hold, you can drag the icons around to build your favorite four. Now when you're in the home screen, there's your favorite four. So let's go ahead and talk about the home screen since we've been there so long. If you'll notice, there's these icons here across the top and they do different things. This area here is called the widget screen. This is where all the action happens and it's expandable depending on what you have hooked up to it. So for example, if you are using the iData Link Maestro, it will expand out to more features. Some of the car features are gonna be located here. But out of the box, you have six. If you scroll back to one, this screen will go ahead and allow you to display your ways, the radio station or media that you're listening to at the same time scroll back this screen here the second of course is the clock the one we've been on next is going to be a compass with a smaller clock up here in the corner next is going to be the cool spectrum analyzer this thing is awesome this looks really cool and it does multiple things this is one of the only screens that when you touch it this will go ahead and take you right to the EQ. Scroll again. Now it will give you the spectrum display, your album artwork and all your information and your clock. One more, images. So what this is gonna allow you to do is put a bunch of images on a thumb drive, leave it plugged in, so you can have this cool wallpaper action that will just constantly rotate and change the background for you. It gives you these three images that says no images available, telling you that you need to put your own images in. But this will allow you to have a constant background change now, the two big features in this are going to be wired CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. You can also do wired Android Auto. And the reason why wired Android Auto is an important thing to mention is because at the time of filming, there's only five phones, all Google, that are capable of doing wireless Android Auto. Obviously, it's gonna expand out to more. Let's go ahead and plug in a phone though and take a look and see what it looks like. There's a few buttons. The first one is gonna be up here at the top, which is the voice control. When you tap this, you can go ahead and ask her to take you somewhere, send a text message, answer a phone call, call someone. There's a whole bunch of things you can do. The idea behind it is this is your interface, meaning this guy here is what's going to allow you to use all the other features in the radio so that you're not distracted by hitting buttons. But let's go ahead and hit some buttons. The first one up is going to be your maps. This has Google Maps. Hit the little triangle here. You can choose between maps or ways. Phone. This is going to take you to your phone. Voicemail, dialed numbers, contacts, call history, and missed calls are all going to be located here. All you have to do is tell her who you want to call and she'll call them. The middle button is going to be the home page. Here you're going to be able to view all the activities that are going on in Android Auto. The headphones are going to be music. Right now it's playing Pandora. If we hit the little arrow next to it, we have the options that are available to us on this phone. Google Play Books, Google Music, Pandora, and Spotify are all available to us. If you're in Pandora, you can do thumbs up, thumbs down. Come over here, you can find your radio channels that you've made. Lastly, this little icon for what looks like a speedometer, tap that it'll go ahead and return you to the main Kenwood screen. If you're in Android Auto, you can select Home, it'll return you. If you select the App button here, it'll go ahead and return you to Android Auto. Next up, let's take a look at CarPlay. Go ahead and select the CarPlay icon. If you notice, the Android Auto icon was grayed out. You have to pick one or the other. The basic CarPlay screen is located here. Phone, music, maps, messages, currently playing source, your access back to your Kenwood, which is similar to Android Auto, tap it, tap the icon again, or hit the home button and select the app button. Podcasts, audiobooks, as well as any other service that is a CarPlay compatible app. Now, if you'd like to rearrange these icons, you can do that from your phone under the CarPlay and settings. If you press and hold the icon here in the corner, it'll go ahead and launch Siri. From there, you can ask her to do anything you want. Make a phone call, send a text message, take you to some restaurant, you have full access to maps. If you select destination, you have all the places you've been, along with some fast keys here across the top, such as gas station parking, restaurants, coffee houses, and grocery shopping. You can also just say, take me to the closest gas station, and she'll do it. If you tap here, this is where you could say that. 
You can also add, have a keypad to type in the destination. Now if you already have a destination on your phone where you're going, as you get into your car, it'll automatically be here displayed. Over on the side here, you have the last three things that you've used. Select music, select back, here's your playlists, here's your library. Easily scroll through them, because this has a capacitive touch screen. Now that we have a basic understanding of that, let's go ahead and talk about the audio section of this, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter unless this thing sounds good, and this thing's got a lot of stuff to make it sound great. To get to the EQ, there's a couple different ways to do it. First, select Menu, go to Audio, you can get to your audio section. Select the Source, over in the corner you'll see here where it uh, has an EQ. Go ahead and tap that, and it'll take you to the Equalizer. If you're on Home and you're in the Audio widget, you can tap there and it'll take you. If you select the 9 key in the bottom corner, you can select Audio as well. So once you're there, no matter how you get there, let's go ahead and talk about the features. Speaker and crossover is what's going to come up first. Now the nice thing about Kenwood, no matter how high end they are, is they allow you to set it up the most basic way possible or the most advanced way possible. So in this case, we have front speakers, rear speaker, and subwoofer. Select which ones you want and it's going to highlight it in the blue box. For this, we'll go ahead and select front. We can select car type and we can tell it what type of car we have. Compact, full-size, wagon, minivan, SUV, minivan long. If our car doesn't fall into one of those, just leave it as off. If you drive a small compact car, select compact. Now it's gonna ask you speaker size. So let's say you have a six by nine in the front door. Do you have a tweeter, upper door, lower door, on dash, under dash? So say on dash. What size tweeter is it? None, small, medium, large? We'll say small. Move on to the rear. Do the same thing. Let's say in the rear it has a four by six. And then we're gonna be using a 15 inch double for. So at this point we've set up a generic crossover and sound setting for the car. We can move on if we want. However, if we don't want to, we can custom tailor it to our specific needs. So if we go back and we select off, we can come in here and select crossover, select front, highlighted by the blue box, and then tap here, and we can adjust our frequency. We can come over here and we can adjust our slope. 6, 12, 18, 24 dB per octave. We're talking about the blue line right now. And if you'll notice, it's moving. And the angle is changing. The frequencies are located here across the bottom. The 150 that we chose here is our center point. This is how the volume is reduced as the crossover takes effect. At 6 dB, we're going to get a lot of lower end frequencies playing in our speakers. As we move it up to 12 dB, if you'll notice, we'll get less. Even less at 100, and there again at 24, it's reduced a lot. The gain is for turning the volume down. So if the front speakers, or the rear or sub, are too loud, you can reduce them below the zero point. You can also do the same with the tweeter. This adds an active crossover to the front so if your tweeters are up in the dash and let's say they're just screaming in your face and you'd like to turn them down a little bit, you can do that here. Some tweeters have attenuation built into the passive crossovers on them. If they don't, that's what this is for. Select rear, do the same thing. You can adjust, set your slope. Then go ahead and select subwoofer and repeat the process. You can also turn the subwoofer in phase or out of phase. Next up is gonna be the equalizer. Now this has 13 bands of equalization. It also has presets to make your life a little bit easier until you're familiar with how to use it. You have pop, easy, top 40, jazz, powerful, rock, flat, iPod if you're using an iPod, then users one through four so you can make your own EQ settings. Now this has what's called source tone adjust. Source tone adjust allows you to have an EQ setting different for each source you're listening to. If that seems like a lot of work, no problem. Select all source. What this will do is apply whatever EQ setting you've come up with to all your sources across the board. Bass extension will turn on just the low pass EQ for the subwoofer output and turn it off for the high pass. That way you can have a sub EQ but not affect your smaller speakers. You also have your subwoofer volume control located here. To adjust the EQ, simply tap on it wherever you'd like. 
and you can make your EQ curve. You could also fine tune it simply by touching the arrows here. Position and digital time alignment. This is where all the magic happens. This is gonna allow you to simulate a center channel for all the speakers sound to arrive at your head at the same time. There again, it can be as easy or as hard as you'd like. If you select front left, it's gonna go ahead and put a generic setting in there to try to get the sound to you in that seat. You can select front focus, which will help to do that. If you select adjust, you can go ahead and add in your own adjustment. So for example, you can measure from your head to the speaker and input that distance. You can also go into level control and actively turn down or up to zero all the speakers in the car. This is very helpful because sometimes speakers that are really close to you may seem louder than our speakers that are further away. Balance and fader. Simple enough, balance and fader. If you wanna make sure your speakers are working or you just quickly wanna move the sound to the front or rear, just drag your finger around, hit center, it'll take you back to the center point. Volume offset. Volume offset is very handy because we listen to so many different types of media now between phone, radio, CD, DVD, thumb drives, hard drives, Bluetooth, you name it, they all play at different levels. This allows us to go in and match them so that they all sound like they're playing at the same level. That way when you're listening to FM, and let's say you switch to your phone, the volume isn't decreased. You turn it up, and then when you switch back to FM, it blasts you out of the car. This will allow you to go in and increase the volume for whatever source is lower or decrease the volume if you can't go any higher. Zone control. Zone control is an awesome feature if you have kids and you want to do any form of rear seat entertainment. Keep in mind, you don't actually have to have a screen in order for this to function. Sometimes the kids just want to listen to their own music. No problem. Go ahead and throw a CD in here. Now come down to rear source, select disc, select close. Now what this is gonna do is two things. One, it's gonna shut off the subwoofers if you have them connected. Two, it's gonna play this disc in the rear speakers. It's gonna play whatever you have selected up front, up front. So now what this allows you to do is play HD radio up front, disc in the back, tap here, you can control the volume for the rear speakers so that they can hear their music, and then you can hear your music. You have two sources now playing in the car at the same time. The reason why it shuts off the subwoofer is because the rear source is going to be different than the front source, and the front source is what's connected to the subwoofer, so you wouldn't want that playing because it would further confuse the sound stage. But this allows you to play two separate sources at one time. Now if you do have a screen in the car and you have disc and it's a DVD, you can watch the rear movie, they can listen to it, and you can listen to whatever you want up front if they don't want to use headphones. Next up, it's gonna be sound effects. Sound effects is where I'd like to call all the salt and pepper are for the car. If all the other stuff is scary, seems like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna screw it up, this is where it's real easy to do. First up, bass boost. If you're listening to some classic rock or some music that doesn't have very good bass, bass boost is for you. You have three settings, one, two, and three. This will allow that old style music that has a not a deep bass to add bass to it. But be warned, if you have something that has a ton of bass, leave this thing off because you will blow your speakers. It doesn't just affect the subwoofer output, it affects all the outputs. Loudness. If you're one of those type of people that doesn't really like to crank up the volume but wants to have some impact to the music at lower levels, that's what loudness was designed for. If you suck low, that'll give you a bass and treble boost in the music so that while you're listening to it at below 15 volume settings, the music sounds very impactful and alive. As you turn the volume up, it will decrease the effect. Drive equalizer. Drive equalizers are described by Kenwood as a way to reduce road noise. Okay. Space enhancer. It's just that. It uses the internal DSP to try to improve the sound quality of the interior of your car. Sometimes car sounds hollow and lacking. Space enhancer will improve that and make it sound small, medium, or large. Supreme, default is on. Supreme is designed to help recreate high frequency that gets lost from encoding. If you have some form of high frequency distortion that you don't like, try turning it off. But if the highs seem lacking, make sure it's on. Realizer, there again, it uses the DSP built into the radio to try to make the music sound more realistic. There's three settings as well as off to achieve that. And last but not least, Stage EQ. A lot of these cars nowadays have speakers mounted low in the door. Stage EQ uses the DSP and the time correction to help bring that stage up 
and out so that the car sounds bigger and more full. Last but not least, we have audio memory. This is a great feature that these units have always had, but it's been buried in some obscure menu. Now it's right where it needs to be, in the EQ settings. If you spent all this time to go ahead and dial this thing in to where it sounds amazing, the thing that would suck the most is if you disconnect power and you lose it all. This allows that to not happen. What you want to do is go ahead and set it up. Lock it. That way, when the battery is disconnected or something else happens, you can recall the memory so that you can get all those settings back. It's a really great feature. All right, guys, this has been our review of the 9905. We hope you found that informative. Fernando, if you please. All right, you, if you like this video, please subscribe, share. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. You guys have a great night as always. We'll talk to you later next time. Bye. Bye.